Hi, nobodies. So today at 12.30 in the morning, I want to talk to you about perception. Perception is reality. Not. Um, but it is what you believe. It's what your brain does to what you see, what you hear, you know. Um, and to you, how you perceive events, things that are said, is your reality. But it's not necessarily reality. For instance, today I went for a walk with my daughter. And I told her, I said, I'm going to walk to Dollar General. Let's walk to Dollar General. And she said, it's so far away, Mom. And I was like, it's 1.4 miles. It's not far at all. Won't take us long to get there. Now, we both knew which Dollar General we were walking to. And in her head, it was farther away than it was in my head. In her head, 1.4 miles is a long way to walk. In my head, it's not three miles. 1.4 may as well be right around the block in my head. That's how I perceive distance. Both of us are right. She says it's a long ways away. I say it's not that far. Neither one of us is wrong. But we perceive it that way. And at a certain point, we get to the, the crest of this hill. And I was like, okay, Dollar General is right at the top of that hill. And she said, that's so far away. And to me, I was like, it's just right there. I can see it. So it's close. You know, we were still a good 10 minutes away walking. But, you know, the way she's going to perceive it is that we walked a long way. And, guys, I could have walked back. <laughs> but my daughter, when we're on this rise and I'm like, it's right down there. She's like, oh, I feel like I'm going to pass out. 14 years old. 100 and... 15, 120 pound girl. Bloom of youth on her. She can't walk 1.4 miles. So she perceives that as a long distance. Whereas I see it as, okay, you know, we could walk around the park, around Mills Park twice and do well over a mile and a half. And that would have that that fucking hill I hate. Because when you go to Mills Park, um, there's this one hill. When I used to walk it every day, fuck, I hated that hill. Every single time I'd be like, man, I just need to turn around. I just need to turn around and I'd have to push myself to get up. I'm like, God, aunt, there are people that run this freaking, they run up this incline and you can't walk up it. You act like you're going to climb. Like, you're going to have to get on all fours and crawl up this fucking hill. And there's people running. And they're running the track, like, I don't know, five or six rounds. You know, so to them, that hill ain't nothing. They don't perceive it as anything but a little hill. Like, it doesn't even bother them. So perception is not reality. Another example of this is when you're walking through a room and you hear somebody say something and you're like, what? Because now what you hear depends on who you are. But me, I'm always going to hear something dirty. I am always going to go, what? <laughs> huh? You know, that's me. I'm, I'm always going to hear something dirty and know that, no, they didn't say that. You know? And, and that's the thing, you know, you, you know, like, you always take a second to go, no, <laughs> I did not just hear what I thought I heard. And then you look to see who's speaking. And if you know them, or if you don't, I mean, you're going to make a 
pop judgment of whether you actually heard what you thought you heard or that can't be what they said. You know, and if it's somebody you don't know if they said what you thought they said, then you're going to go over there and go, what, what are you talking about? I just, I could have sworn I heard you say this. And then they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I said that. So, whoa. Um, so with that being said, that we hear things, you know, and we'll see somebody and go, oh, it's my friend Jess. Hey, Jess. And they turn around and you're like, whoa, you don't look anything like Jess. And then they turn back around and you're like, how, how did I think that that was Jess? My eyes deceived me. You know, sometimes you see shit. Like, seriously, y'all, there, there was this one summer I was taking Restoril, a.k.a. Tamazepam, for sleep. And I legitimately thought I was hallucinating snow. Now, it wasn't snow. But I didn't find out until this year <laughs> that it was some kind of something off of trees because I'd never seen it before. And like the year, the years since I didn't see it, but this year I did. And I was like, <gasps> it wasn't a hallucination. See, I had thought, okay, the drug made me hallucinate. That's not why I stopped taking it. <laughs> Oddly enough. It was the staying awake all night. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to make me sleep. <laughs> um, the hallucinations did not stop me from taking it. But I, I legit thought, it can't be snowing in August. But that's fucking snow. But I can't catch it. You know, so I was like, I'm hallucinating. And that was my perception of that. But that wasn't reality. Reality was, it was some kind of fluff off of trees that's reality but i perceived it as snow i perceived it as a hallucination so now we get to the other parts of perception and that's perceiving why people do things that they do or how they say things you know um most of us, if, if you know somebody, you know when they're being sarcastic. You know when they're being passive aggressive. Like if they're talking to somebody that you know they hate and they say something, you're like, ooh, burn. And the person who they said it to may not catch it. But you caught it because you know the speaker. You perceive it differently than the person who was speaking and the person being spoken to. Because you know the person who's speaking hates the person they're speaking to. The person they're speaking to doesn't know that they're hated. And they don't catch the burn. So their perception of that event is going to be different. Just as, you know, you're watching this happen. So your perception is different than the speaker. The speaker is not going to be looking at you. And you don't know what's going on in their head. So even though you perceive, ooh, that was a hell of a burn, you talk to your friend a little later, your friend's like, I wasn't being passive aggressive. I was not being snotty. I was not. You know, I, I actually meant that. I didn't realize. And then you have a good laugh about it. You know, like, oh my God, I did say that. Shit, that's fucked up. Um, <laughs> kind of like, no, I'm not going to tell that story. Um, I have made some bad puns, uh, some really wrong puns in my life. And sometimes they're intentional. Sometimes they're not intentional. So when somebody sees the unintentional pun, and they laugh because they think that I made it up on the fly and that I meant for that to come out and I didn't, but they perceive it. So you cannot say that when somebody says one thing, they mean something else. You don't know the thoughts that are in their head, no matter how well you know somebody, 
You cannot put intent behind what they say and what they do unless you ask them. If you say, hey, why did you do this? Your friends, you typically know, like, this person puts a lot of thought and effort into things, but you know, occasionally they can have a whim. They can just choose not to think about something and just say, I want to do this, and they do it. Then you got friends that do everything, you know, they're fly by the seat of their pants, and then occasionally there will be things that they think about, that they think long and hard about before they do. And you'll think, oh, they just decided to do this because that's what they do. That's the reality that you see. And um, in interpersonal relationships, that reality is kind of hard to navigate sometimes because, you know, people fight over words that are said actions. Um, there was a time I was having an argument with a person and, um, I was trying to figure out the best course of action to diffuse, like they were, they were having some issues and they kind of bit my head off earlier for being myself. So, so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what do I do? Because if I do this, they might bite my head off again. And if I do that, so what's the best course of action? So then they said, you know, don't give me the silent treatment. I fucking hate that. And I was like, I'm not giving you the silent treatment. I'm just trying to figure out what the best course of action is. But see, their reality was that I was giving them the silent treatment. My reality, my perception was they're being argumentative. So I need to be careful with my words. Um, a person comes at, a person's mad. That's their reality. That, that's their, they're mad at you. They're fighting with you. They may not see that when you come back at them, it's because they pushed you too far. Because they did something. They're just going to feel like you came out of left field and started screaming at them. When in all actuality, from their pers perspective and their perception, is that you started it. Who, how many times do you, do you hear people say, she started it? He started it. It's always, I wasn't doing anything. I was minding my own business. And then they came up and they were doing this and they were doing that. So I did this and I did that. That's their reality. What they perceive of the fight. And then you take four people watching the same thing happen and you get four different stories probably unless it's like a really cut and dry thing but chances are you get four different stories and you get out of those four most likely in in a situation where two people are equally going at it you're gonna it's a crapshoot on whose side they're gonna be on these four you know, and even, even if you just walked up and wailed on somebody, one of those four might be like, well, that one gave them a dirty look. So they jumped up, you know, like they're putting their own spin on things because our minds, this is the problem with human beings. We don't see things perfectly. Our senses are not um, good enough to see things exactly how they are. Even no matter how fucking enlightened you are, no matter how much you overthink, and no matter how many times I play the devil's advocate, 
I cannot say what the truth is of an event. I cannot say, the person said this to me because of this. You know, they think this. No, they said it because, well, why'd they say it? You know, because I mean, even if I play the devil's advocate and hit on the exact reason why something happened, or I hit on exactly how they're thinking or exactly what triggered them, I don't know that that's reality unless they say, hey, yeah, this is what happened. Um, and it's still not going to be the way that I see it. It's just a possible, like, what was I doing that might have been bad? Did I make that face out loud? I probably did. <laughs> you know, um, and I always say, you know, like, when one person, you know, when you see, like, people breaking up and stuff, a lot of times somebody's going to be the villain. But unless that person's done something really bad, like... You come home from work and your spouse is fucking somebody else in your bed. That is an obvious bad person. Bad thing you did. That's, that's just, just disrespectful as fuck. Uh, if somebody, if your husband gets somebody else pregnant, yeah, that's a bad fucking thing. They did you dirty there. But when it comes to fights and what's said in fights and that back and forth and how things end, you know, like how they told you or how they chose, what day they chose to tell you or whatever, that's not really, you can't, you don't know their thought process. So you can perceive it as they went about everything all wrong. Whereas in their mind, they worked it out like every which way to see like, and you know, you're human. So, you know, sometimes it's like, wow, you've been thinking about that for years and this is what you came up with. Yeah, I am fallible. <laughs> um, just because you don't like the way somebody did something doesn't mean that they didn't put a lot of thought in it. Doesn't mean that that they didn't think of try to think of the best way to do something and just could not think of a different way. So they went with their gut. And, you know, sometimes there is no right way. No matter what you do, shit's going to blow up. You know, I mean, if you're lighting TNT, it's going to blow up. It doesn't matter what you light the fuse with. It's fucking TNT. It's going to blow doesn't matter if you got a lighter, a match, a candle, or anything, you know, I mean, it's, there's no, sometimes there's no right way. It's just gonna get lit. And you can look at it like, they did it with a candle. They should have done it with a lighter. They did it wrong. Eh. They did it the way they thought to do it. It made sense in their head. That's their reality. You really have to look at the person and say, did they do it that way because they wanted to fuck up? Did they do it that way just to piss everybody off? If it's no, they probably thought about it. Thought long and hard. And sometimes people are just fucking exhausted. They lose their shit. You know, you cannot rule out 
in your perception of things that when somebody loses their shit, that even if you ain't done anything, I mean, like everybody's perceiving they ain't done anything. That person might just be fucking exhausted. Like I said, you don't know what people have been through. So, perception is not really reality. And you have to open your mind to that. That perception is only your interpretation of reality. You know, some people can interpret more than others. Some people... Anyway, I've had a good day. It's a beautiful fucking day. I hope that you had a good day. If you didn't, every moment is an opportunity to turn things around. So I hope that you're able to do that. Uh, during this time, you know, COVID-19's out there. I'm not saying freak the fuck out. Because seriously, we don't need any more of that. But, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Okay? It's pretty fucking simple. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. Just so you know, I remember reading a study or something. But it said, you are more likely to catch a cold from a, uh, from a handshake than French kissing somebody. So... Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs> Unless they're lying to us about how it's spread. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. And if you don't have to go out, act like me when there's an ice storm outside. Stay the fuck inside. If you don't have to be out there, don't fucking go out there. You know? You could be in your front yard. But if you don't have to go to the store, don't go to the store. Don't take the whole family. You know, because the, the, more, the more we go out, the longer we're going to be forced to be in lockdown. Because this shit, something tells me it's not going to go away. And the fact that they are expecting us to do the right thing... We are so not going to do the right thing. So then they're going to have to put us in lockdown. And then there's going to be a bunch of bullshit. I can see it coming. I hope I'm wrong. But I can see it coming. That people are stupid. Now it's not just in America. <laughs> there's stupid people everywhere. So, you know, just, just my advice to everybody who doesn't watch me. Because nobody will, you know, like maybe two people will watch this. Um, but leave your kids at home. If you got to go to the store, one fucking person out of the whole household. One person. Doesn't need to be two people or three people, you know. Let your man go to the store by himself. Let your lady go to the store by herself. Trust me, she wants to get the fuck away from those kids. Let her go to the store by herself kids ain't gotta go they should be doing what normal kids do because when i was 14 i could walk a mile four easy all day fucking long on an incline i could walk that mile four okay because i was from one end of town to the other all day long visit brandy and then crystal and then john and then crystal again so uh, but stay in the fucking house. Teach the kids how to make some fucking mud pies. Play in the dirt. Do what they gotta do. You know, let them be fucking kids. And keep them at home. They're little germ factories. You know this, folks. Anyway, have a good day. Bye.